Hello there, everybody. Welcome to my 100,000 subscriber Q&A. Sorry, it's two months late. I was in Europe for a bit and couldn't really record, but it's fine because I am back. And since it has been quite a while since I've hit 100K, I have a little surprise for myself. I finally have this wonderful, wonderful plaque that is just beautiful. Yeah, that's gonna leave a mark. But you know, as always, I have to say a massive thank you to you guys for supporting me so much that I've actually managed to achieve basically one of my dreams since I was a little kid, or like 11 or 12, I guess. Having this plaque here is a physical representation of what I've achieved on YouTube in only about a year on this channel, which is just mind blowing to me. So thank you so much for all the support and hopefully you will show continued support as I continue to lose my mind on this little game we call GTA 5 and hopefully other games in the future. But we'll get into that in the Q and A because there are questions involving that and other things. So let me just zoom in my camera because this is a bit far out. I also turned on my light. I don't know if that if this looks better. My setup is all right. I do have two actual Elgato lights there to light me up. It's still not great. I know my apartment is not great for recording. I have echo on my mic. We'll fix that in the coming months, hopefully. But for now, we just... Yeah. Now, just before we get into this, as always, I can't answer all the questions. There were over 300 comments. So I tried to answer every like unique question, question that obviously everybody wanted to know. But if there are things that I haven't answered that you may want to know, check out my other Q&As. I may have answered it then. And if I didn't get to answer your question, apologies, but I tried to do my best to sort of answer all the ones that people were answering, asking the most. So... But now we can get started with the first one coming from A10 Enjoyer. Also, I'm reading the questions off the screen. That's why I'm looking there. I'm not just camera shy. And they ask, do you plan to play and upload other games in the future? If so, when do you think and what games? Now, I think I have answered this before, but there's 50,000 more people since the last Q&A. We're actually like 80,000 now. So makes sense to answer again. And the answer is yes, I do want to upload other games. However, GTA is doing very well at the moment still, so I kind of want to continue with that as long as it's doing well. But other games I do want to upload, for example, Red Dead Redemption, I've never played before, so I think it would be cool to give it a go. I'm looking forward to Starfield that's coming out in a few months, I think. I don't think I'll make it like a huge thing on my channel, but if I get the opportunity to play through it a little bit, could be fun. Obviously, GTA 6 when that eventually comes out. And there are other games I do want to play here and there, whether it's on my main channel or on my second channel, who knows, but do look forward to more things outside of GTA eventually. L asks, on average, how much time do you put into a video getting gameplay, editing, etc.? Now, this is a tough one to answer because it depends what type of video I'm creating. For example, the Oppressor Mark II video, which I'm sure you've all seen, probably took close to 50 hours overall. Gameplay, editing, everything took ages. But then sometimes I'll have a broke to ball an episode that I finish in like five hours. So it kind of depends on the content on an average video, like a 20 to 30 minute video, like coming up with the idea for it, recording, editing, probably about eight to 10 hours, I'd say on the average video. But I'm starting to work on more difficult ones, let's say, that are gonna start taking 50 hours plus for each individual video. So wish me luck. Smokescreen100 asks, who are you and why am I subbed? I don't know, man. Jaskaret Singh asks, Yo, Dan, how are you with the girls? Ha <laughs> ha, supremely below average. Big Juicy Apple 9835 asks, How tall are you standing up? Try and calculate it, I don't know. Flops the Soda Fan asks, favorite TV show? Now, I have a few answers for this because it's very difficult to give one answer for my favorite TV show. Of all time, I would probably still have to say Friends. I've seen it 10 times, which is 100 seasons, which is a lot, but it is really good. I still enjoy it. People that hate on it get a life. My other favorite TV show is probably Skins. It's a teen UK drama type show that's really, really good. It's kind of like Euphoria, but not shit. And then the other two answers I have is One Piece. It's still ongoing, but it's probably the best piece of fiction I've ever watched in my entire life. And then the other show I'd put up as one of my favorites is called Origaru or My Teen Love Romantic Comedy Wrong As I Expected. I think that's the correct title. It's a stupid long title. Very good show though. Another honorable mention would probably be like Doctor Who. Love that show. Can't wait for David Tennant to come back. But yeah, they're my top five, I guess. BadGXR3449 asks, you guys have got to stop putting numbers in your name, man. Come on. It's not aesthetic. If you could have any superpowers, what would it be? If we're going for like realistically, like a not a stupidly overpowered one, I'd say teleportation. I love traveling. I w did high school in Europe and I have friends there and in America. So being in Australia kind of sucks for that. So being able to teleport there and back would be very nice. If we're talking about like stupid powers, I don't know, reality, 
Let's, let's say perfect English skills. That would be a good power to have. Fuck me. 180XS Twin Turbocharged asks, what would you say your next goal in life is other than YouTube? Do I have any big plans? When you say big goal, obviously there's a few things it could mean. I think the next thing I really want to do is move into a bigger place. What you can see behind me is my whole apartment. I live in a studio apartment. Unfortunately, I got to this like right before I blew up on YouTube and I definitely can afford to live in a better place, but I have to wait out my contract. So I'm trying to get a two bedroom apartment when my contract runs out so I can have a proper office space for YouTube. That's my next goal, if you can call it that. Apart from that, I guess just going to the gym and getting fit, but I have a few medical things. It's not serious. I have like a bad shoulder, so I can't really lift weights at the moment. I need to get sorted out before I can actually start going to the gym. I know I can do running and stuff, but I'm, I'm lazy as fuck. But yeah, that's probably about it. Jaycon asks, what did you do to get your first video so high quality? So the reason why my first video is, as you say, so high quality, it's not, but is mainly just because I did YouTube for about 10 years on and off before the first video on this channel. I had another channel with like three 300 videos, another channel with like 200 videos and a few little things in between. So I just learned throughout that editing skills, commentary, etc. So the first video on this channel is probably a lot better than most channels first videos. And that's the reason why. Adam White asks, I know you do YouTube full time now. Congrats. Thank you. But what job did you have previously? Previously before YouTube, I worked in a company where I basically just did like website management type stuff. Nothing that serious. Basically like updating stocks, putting products up for listing. Not very exciting. It was my first ever job. I got it when I was in university. I was there for about a year and a half. Yeah, pretty much a year and a half. And then I got fired. I didn't explicitly get fired. I kind of, but because I was a student, I only worked part-time and the company wanted to move to having more full-time people. So they just said that instead of being a part-time worker, I work on a contract basis. So whenever they need help, they'll call me in. They just didn't call me in. So it was really good timing. Actually, I was planning on leaving like within the next couple of weeks. And then I got that firing. So it was kind of just an easier time for me. I didn't have to have the awkward conversation about leaving. So pretty good. Before I get to that next question, I did have another job. I was an RA in a university hall, which is a residential advisor. I didn't really get paid for it. I just got like money off of my rent. So if that counts as a job, I did that for a year as well. It was fun. Jay Elite asks, what is your favorite genre of music to listen to and who is your favorite artist? I do listen to quite a few different genres, but if I had to now, oh my God, I do listen to a few genres, but if I had to nail it, no, my fucking <laughs> God, I can't speak. If I had to narrow it down to just one, it would probably be punk rock slash punk pop, depending on how you see it. And my favorite artist is All Time Low. I'm going to see them in November as well, which is really good because no one ever comes to Australia. I have seen them before as well when I lived in Europe, but seeing them again would be great. And yes, they are my favorite artist. If you don't know them, they did the song Dear Maria Count Me In, which is extremely famous. So check them out. They, they, they lit. Automotive asks, do you have a girlfriend? Well, of course. Yeah, of course I do. Here, meet her. I'm very lonely. Chewy asks, Hey Dan, I love this series, but I was wondering what inspired you to come up with Broke to Ballin? So I might have told this before, but I don't really remember. It was basically a mix of, I already had sort of a Broke to Ballin style series with Desmond, but it was completely scripted. Like I wrote out physical scripts for every single video and planned it. And they just took so long. Like each episode was taking like 20 to 30 hours. And it just wasn't sustainable going forward for me, especially if I wanted to bring more personality into my channel. So not only that, but it was was on the PC version of the game and I wanted to try out the extended and enhanced version on PS5. So I thought, okay, when I get up my PS5, I will do a new version of the series and I called it Broke to Ballin. And I wanted to not only have E&E, &E, the extended enhanced version of GTA, but I wanted to do non-scripted videos. And by that, I mean like, yes, I will plan out what I want to do in the video beforehand, but not script what I say. I want to go based on my personality and just have fun with it. And that's basically why I do Broke to Ballin. And thank God it's doing well because because God's scripting's a pain in the ass, even though it is fun occasionally. A Blaze Hydra, one of the channel OGs, the original subscribers, viewers, followers, gamers asks, what are you planning looking forward? Why, why am I struggling to read today? So this is obviously a very open-ended question and there's a lot I could go into, but I will just go through, go through a few little things of what I'm planning for. So obviously one, I want to move into a new apartment coming towards the end of the year. Two, I want to start getting back into a more consistent schedule of uploading. I think I've been doing pretty well around one a week, but I want to like make sure I do one a week. Not only that, but I want to improve the quality of the videos. So I'm going to continue doing Broke to Bowling, 
but it won't be every week from now on. I'll be sprinkling in a few other videos here and there. I'm working on one right now that's probably going to take me like 50 hours plus again, so I can't wait for that. I have a few other ideas here, so I want to start being more creative, doing bigger videos, and hopefully that will be fun to watch, but also improve the... I can't think of English language right now. Improve the growth of the channel? Sure, because not everyone's going to want to watch a specific grind series on GTA. Some people will like watching one-off videos that are really entertaining, or other games that are really entertaining, and I want to start doing that more. On top of that, I do want to get back into streaming. I do keep saying this, but I never do it, and it's mainly just because I'm lazy. But yeah, I think they're the main things. Moving into a new apartment, increasing the quality of videos, and hopefully streaming at some point. Well, I promise I'll get there. Just don't hassle me. Elpiver asks, what are your regrets about being a YouTuber? Now, I don't really have any really big regrets. Things are going amazingly, but if there were a few things I could change, it would be one that I wish I had a way to have the same success of the channel so far, but not make it as GTA centric. Because the further and further I continue playing GTA and building my audience, the harder it's probably going to be to stop being a solo GTA YouTuber. Because while I do love the videos I make and love playing the game, eventually I want to start doing other stuff so I don't get burned out. Also, when GTA dies, my channel doesn't die. So far, it's still going well. We have GTA 6 hopefully on the horizon. So as long as I can keep myself going until then, it will be good. The only other big regret I have is that I had a Minecraft channel from ages 11 to like 14. And I was an idiot back in the day and deleted all of those videos instead of just making them unlisted or something. So my biggest regret is probably deleting those because I would have loved to go back and saw seen what those look like and be able to react to them for you guys but sadly they are lost to the void toxic gamer asks do you think you'll ever do face cam videos but yeah, I will do more. The video I'm working on now, actually, I use face cam for. I think for the most part, Broke to Ball and I like keeping non-face cam and some of the other videos. I think it just works better without it. But when I do see the opportunity to put my horrendous face in the video, I will do that. Avila Luck. Avila, I still don't know how to say, say your name, man. I'm sorry. But would you do those videos, Journey to 100 million in GTA, or maybe a video with tips to earn money? Yine, which is yes and no in German. I don't think I'd be doing tip videos necessarily. I think I'll have videos where there happen to be tips in it, but I wouldn't do like a specifically like, like here's how you make money. I think there's a lot of other creators who do that way better than me and already do it, so I don't see a point doing it. But in terms of the journey to 100 mil videos, I could see myself doing something like that as like a really big one-off type thing, similar to the oppressor video, similar to other videos I may make in the future. It's not going to be a thing I really delve into that much unless I have a real purpose for doing it. So if I had a challenge or I did like a big live stream where I did it until I made 100 million, some sort of like good idea that I could make into a good video. I wouldn't just do it for the sake of it because again, there's a lot of other great creators that do it way better than me. And I don't feel like just making a worse version of something else they could make. I want to do something that I could be the best at, which would probably be something involving a lot of pain as you all know. Joel Evans asks, how do you balance your personal life with the demands of being a content creator? Any tips for maintaining a healthy work life? You got what I mean. So here's the thing. I don't have a life. I basically sit here, play games, edit, record, and then I sit on that couch and watch TV. That's it. Uh, that is genuinely it. Obviously, I do have other things occasionally, like I did a big trip to Europe, which I had to pre-record a bunch of videos for. Occasionally, I hang out with my friends like once a month and... Yeah, that's about it. In terms of <laughs> maintaining a healthy work-life work -life balance, I can't really give much good advice because I'm, well, one, I don't have a life. Two, I'm very bad at scheduling and, may and like prioritizing and what's the word? Time management. I'm very shit at it. I can't lie. There's a reason why videos never come out exactly the same each week without fail for months on end. There's a reason why I don't upload like every day like some people. I am genuinely awful at time management and I always have been and I always try and get better, but I never do. I think... I'm probably the best I've ever been at it, but that's purely just because I'm able to make my own schedule. When I have to have a set schedule, like when I was still going to university or when I have my job, I'm miserable. I, I genuinely can't stand having to go to sleep early every night because I have to wake up early the next day. I sometimes like going to bed early, but I want it to be my choice, not forced upon me. So in terms of maintaining a health healthy worth, in terms of doing that, it basically comes down to making sure you enjoy the life you're living as much as you can. I enjoy the life I'm living right now, because 
because I have a very, you know, floopy schedule, non-strict schedule. I don't know what the correct word is for that. Some people like having really scheduled out lives. It's just not for me. So you kind of have to figure out what you like first. If you like structure, then you have to figure out to make one that works for you. If you don't like structure, then you have to figure out how to not have a structure in life. I found my way doing this. You might be a crypto millionaire. I don't know. That's really the best advice I can give. Apologies. Felix Renwick asks, can, well, says, congrats on 100k and asks, how do I put up with the stuttering? Okay, now, so I don't actually have a stutter. I know what may look like it by watching my videos. I don't know what's been happening whenever I record, or even like the past year or two, when, when I've been doing YouTube. I, I just, I, I, I <laughs> See, it's bad. I don't know if my brain moves faster than my mouth or my mouth moves faster than my brain. I don't know what it is. I genuinely, I don't have a stutter. When I'm not recording and I can like slow down and process my thoughts better, I'm fine. It's just whenever I get in front of the microphone or camera, I want to speak at a million miles a minute and sometimes it just doesn't work. Although the one thing I do appreciate about how I've decided to go about my content is that with a lot of other YouTubers, I'm not calling anyone out. I just think people would genuinely do this. When they make a mistake in their speech or they stutter or they fuck up a sentence beyond repair, they'll cut it out, start again, try and have a more coherent time so people can understand them. With me, I make fun of myself and it's like 50% of my jokes is just me not being able to speak. And luckily you seem to enjoy it, which is great for me because I can't speak normally apparently. So that's kind of how I put up with it in video making. In real life, I don't actually deal with it that much. I'm just a, a mess on camera, I guess. Hopefully it will improve at some point. Ira Plays asks, how did your parents react to you going full-time on YouTube? Now, I'm sure they'll talk to me after they hear this part. At least I think they'll probably watch this. My dad will at least. It was kind of a weird one. So I was at about 20,000 subscribers when I told them. I went back to New Zealand, which is where they live at the moment, and sat them down at dinner and basically was really cryptic and weird because that's how I enjoy to do things. That's how I like to do things. That's how I enjoyed whatever. Basically, I sat them down at dinner and said, I am doing something right now that I want to stop doing university and possibly leave my job for. Do you want to guess what it is? And I played this stupid guessing game for like an hour, two hours plus, um, where my dad, as a very, very analytical person, asked me a lot of very specific questions, such as like, is this something that is very scalable as a business? Are you doing something that has to do with crypto? Which I said no very quickly. And all these other questions and eventually whittled it down to something. I eventually whittled it down to a place where I thought they were confident enough in me where I actually told them it was YouTube I was doing rather than something else. I came from an era of the online world where being a YouTuber was very embarrassing and I still think that way because back in 2013, you were a loser if you did YouTube and I know it's changed now. That's still how, how I think and that's how I thought my parents would think as well. But luckily they reacted very well and basically since the moment I told them, my channel's just been doing better and better and better. So I just got in at the right time to tell them that I'm gonna be a online loser for the rest of my life and they reacted pretty well. My both very proud of me. My dad understands it a little bit. My mama tries to, and it's going well. So, you know, I'm happy about that. A lot of people don't have supportive parents. I'm very lucky to have supportive ones. Aura Edits asks, uh, what type of food is your favorite love from India? And they also say congratulations. God, I can't speak. Uh, so in terms of individual food item. It's either like pizza or burger for me in terms of like an individual item to eat. In terms of a cuisine, it would have to be Japanese. I love Japanese food in general, but I unfortunately have a nut allergy. So cashews, peanuts, and a lot of other tree nuts I am allergic to, which unfortunately means a lot of cuisines are off limits to me for the most part. Most Chinese food, a lot of Indian food, a lot of other Southeast Asian food or Middle Eastern food, I just can't eat otherwise I die. So that kind of leaves me to only finding cuisines that I can eat. And luckily, Japanese barely use any nuts in their meals, at least the ones I've come across. So fortunately, I like the food in general, and I can also eat most of it, unlike other cuisines. Like, I love Indian, I love Korean, Chinese, but I can't eat a lot of it, and sometimes it's not worth it because of things like cross-contamination or restaurants just not knowing if they use nuts sometimes, and it's just a risk I don't like taking most of the time. So Japanese are my favorite. It's probably the thing I go for most, unless I just have a pizza or fish and chips, which is more often. The German guy 66 asks, how many episodes of Broke to Ballin are you going to upload and what is the last thing you want to buy for the end of the series? So again, I don't really know how many episodes there are going to be. Could be 40, could be 400. It's not going to be 400. But basically, it just depends on a few things such as how much stuff is left to do in this series. Like, I still have all the heists to do apart from like three of them. I still have to buy a facility. I still have to do contact missions I haven't done and or just buy things I haven't bought yet. So there's still enough content left, but it's going to depend on 
that it's going to depend on how much fun I'm having with the series anymore because if I'm just not having fun anymore it's going to come across in the videos it's just going to get shit and it's also going to depend on GTA 6. If we find out GTA 6 is releasing like mid next year and I'm still like ages away from completing everything I'll probably just do a bunch at once in a few episodes to catch up but in terms of what I want to buy at the end of the series, so my main goal, I want to have sort of like the best version of most businesses. So I want to buy like the Maze Bank Tower. I want to have like the biggest penthouse, the biggest yacht and that type of stuff. But the main big goal is to buy the Golden Jet for 10 million because it is a stupid investment. And what do you do when you're rich? You buy stupid shit. So that's kind of the end goal. I really don't know how much longer it's going to go. I imagine it will go for at least another minimum six months because, you know, there's still quite a bit to do. And I don't grind the game like a psycho off camera because I find that boring. So most of the money I make is just in videos. So it's not like I'm going to be able to buy the jet in two months. It's going to take a while. So don't worry. We have time left. That's a weird statement. Static... <laughs> Let's drink water. I can't speak anymore. Static Carnage asks, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, five years. It will be 2028. I will be 27 years old. Hopefully alive. That's what we're hoping on. I want to do like a realistic prediction and then like a idealistic prediction. So realistically, I want to still be doing YouTube, please. I would hope to be at least at like, I must say I can get to a million subscribers in five years. I'm assuming I can get to a million in that time as long as I don't fall off massively. GTA 6 probably will be out by that point and GTA 6 will give a massive boost to my channel as long as I'm still doing GTA related content. So I want to be there. Ideally, I want to move to the UK by then. I lived in Europe in high school, I know I keep saying this, but while I do love Australia, it is my home. It is really far away from everything and it's just, so annoying being off time zone for like talking to a lot of people, my friends especially, being off time zone to watch football, you know, being far away to travel. So I would really like to move to the UK within five years, maybe before I'm 26, so in the next three or four, but we'll see. An idealistic situation, I would like to have like, this thing is, I could say 10 million. I don't know if I want to be that famous. It sounds like a hassle. Let's say idealistic, I could be at like 5 million subscribers, living in UK, in a massive mansion, have all my bitches joking, I want a monogamous relationship. I said that completely wrong, but you get the point. And I think another thing is just be fitter. Right now I have like ankle issues, I have a shoulder issue, I'm not in the gym, I ain't fit at all, even if I look skinny. Trust me, I ain't fit. So I'd like to be fit as well. Um, there's probably other things I can think of, but that's about it. Starboy on YouTube asks, would we see a different series from Broke to Ballin? Maybe. So I do have ideas for another series. I have one specifically for GTA in mind that I've been thinking a little bit about the past couple of months, although it's going to be much more like bigger videos, highly edited that take a long time compared to Broke to Ball, which are more like easy, quick videos. So it kind of just depends on whether I think it's worth it. It's going to be something I decide on myself um, over the coming like weeks or months because it is going to be a lot of work to do. In terms of other series apart from that, I don't think there will be many like series that go on like for like 30 episodes. There may be a few things where I have like part two, part three, part four, because you can do bigger videos and make them more like a movie sets rather than a giant TV series. So possibly in terms of another series soon, Probably not very soon. Broke to Ballin's a thing that's working. It's a thing you guys enjoy. That's going to keep going. And I'm going to start working on a lot more like individual videos over the coming weeks and months. But possibly. Stay tuned. Joke is Wild asks, what do you feel is the most important thing to be successful streaming slash uploading GTA content to YouTube? Now, I know this advice goes around all the time in terms of aspiring creators, but I think you have to be unique. I don't want to toot my own horn or anything because, you know, no one can be perfectly unique. Everyone is copying someone or similar to someone else. But I think when I came on the GTA scene recently, I think the thing that I sort of brought to the table that not as many creators were bringing, and I don't want to, I'm, try, I'm trying not to be mean here, this is just my personal opinion, is that I brought a lot more personality compared to education. If you look at other channels, they may have a lot of educational content about how to do this, tips and tricks, blah, blah, blah. And then you look at my channel. Sure, it has some of that in the videos, but it's mostly me being a goddamn idiot and dying all the time. You should not be listening to me for advice. I am supremely average at the game, but I think it's my personality, my humility in the sense that like I leave in my fails, my stutters, me being terrible at the game. I think is that's what appeals to people a bit more than say some other channels. Like with my oppressor video, it could be a nice guide of how to get an oppressor easier, but no, it's me suffering for 22 hours. I think that's what I brought. There's a lot of other channels that do different things. You know, that's what you have to do. You have to be unique in a sense. You don't have to be the most unique person in the goddamn world, but you have to put a little spin on something that someone else hasn't done 
done before, and hopefully you'll be successful doing that. Brutalis asks, would you ever do IRL stuff on the channel? And if yes, then what? I don't think I'd do any IRL stuff, you know, by myself. I'd have to be prompted by something. Like if I got an opportunity to work with someone or someone gave me a good idea, then I'd do it. But I think by myself, I'm very comfortable just behind the computer. I'm not a very super confident person when I'm going outside doing IRL stuff. But if I was doing it with someone, if someone gave me a good idea or it was like a, I don't know, a sponsorship deal or something, I'd consider it, but it's not going to be something I actively go and choose to do by myself because it's just... It ain't me. Enemy PG 3 d asks, what is your least favorite thing about the Broke to Ballin series? My least favorite thing by far about the series is having to grind money for video ideas. So for example, if I want to go ahead and buy the, I know I already bought it, but say I wanted to buy the Avenger for the new update, I have to do a bunch of grinding off camera that I don't enjoy very much and doesn't really make a big impact on the video. Sometimes I do include the grinding in the video and try and make it interesting by having funny commentary or edits, but realistically, I just don't enjoy it that much. I really like having every episode be unique, doing a different mission, using a different vehicle, having something unique happen to me rather than just doing grinding over and over again. I personally don't find it that enjoyable. I don't think it's great to just repeat what you're doing every single episode on camera. So that's definitely the most annoying thing or most boring thing for me. I do know I could stream it. I could stream on YouTube or on Twitch, me grinding so that at least when I'm doing the boring stuff, I can have you guys watch me if you want to and I can interact with you. It's something I've considered in the past. If you would like to see that, let me know because I will definitely consider it. It makes it less boring for me to grind if I have you guys there with me, but yeah, we'll see. That's by far the worst thing though. Ben Holden Fire 6 says, congrats bro, been here since you had a couple of hundred. Thank you very much. If you could choose, would you have multiple really fun DLCs for GTA 5 or Rockstar release GTA 6 in a couple of days? GTA 6, come on. GTA 6, I, I would, I would suck a man. No, stop. If you don't want GTA 6 in a couple of days, you're dumb. Like, even if the game is bad, like, even if it's, like, nowhere near as good as people expected, the absolute blow up in just the world from the release of that game is going to be immense. Like, I would be very surprised if my channel didn't, like, triple in size a month after GTA 6 releases. And I know it's not all about me and about monetary stuff, but just, I think everyone's so excited for this game, so ready to get into it, that, you know, people would do anything to have it tomorrow. So, that's definitely my answer. SRT asks, what do you enjoy doing? You can't say YouTube and also congratulations on the 100k subscribers. Thank you. So apart from YouTube, things I enjoy playing other games. I play FIFA a lot, even though it is cancerous as hell. I'm trying to get back into other games. Like I never completed the original Spider-Man on PS4, so I'm playing through that again. I do enjoy playing RuneScape every so often. I get back into it here and there, so I enjoy playing that. I enjoy watching TV and anime. I know that's very exciting. And like there are other things I do enjoy, but again, I'm very lazy at picking up hobbies. I have two guitars sitting right there. I barely ever play, so I'm shit now. I do enjoy music production. I did it in high school for a bit, but I'm also lazy as hell, so I kind of forgotten everything. There's a lot of things I really want to do, but it's just like sitting on the couch and watching TV is just easier, isn't it? Oh, I watch, I watch football as well, so there's that. GTA car enthusiast, straight to the point, how do you feel? Haunt, no. I feel good, thank you. I, I feel good. My throat's feeling sore though. I'm speaking a lot at the moment and messing up a lot. I'm going to be cutting a lot out of this video. Funny joke man 108 says that if you could change anything about how you took the path of your channel and what it would be or what would you do without YouTube? I think I said that correctly. I think similar to the question before about regrets, I would probably, if I could get to the same point and success this channel's at right now, but doing something a bit different, I would still have GTA, but just have more variety in it already so that, you know, I could start doing more variety content more freely now. I'm sure I could, but I would have liked to have done it from the start. The only other thing I would have changed is starting earlier. From the end of my last channel to the start of this one, there was about a four year gap. I wish I made that gap like one year or something, because who knows where I could have been now. Could have been way higher, also could have been way lower. And if I didn't do this, what would I do without YouTube? I think before YouTube started picking up for me, I got really interested into 3D modeling. I was doing 3D modeling in university. I took a class or two in it and I was getting really into that. So it either be like that or game design, something around that sort of creative field. I did really enjoy all that stuff. So I'd probably do something like that right now. Mountain Dew Real CEO. What do you think is the best character in all of the GTA games? My girlfriend. Agatha Baker. Ross McKay asks, what has been your favorite video to make on GTA? Favorite video, it has to, or does it have to be the oppressive video? Because while it's done the best, it was 
fucking horrendous to record. If we're going my favorite to record because of the outcome, it's definitely my Race to Oppressor Mark II video or whatever I called it. If we're talking about pure enjoyment, it probably would still be the Diamond Casino video I did with my friend Shad, just because I was playing with a friend and I don't do that very often. Dylan Campion, one of my amazing channel members, if you want to become one, that looks like I'm pointing to my penis. It's in the description. Congratulations on 100k. What games are you planning on uploading in the future and how are you liking YouTube full time? I am loving YouTube full time. Like I said, I hate having a schedule. So being able to do what I want when I want is a dream come true. Um, although it is also a bit of a curse because then I have to force myself to do things occasionally. So you have videos to watch, but it's fine. I need bills to pay. And am I planning on uploading different games? As I said before, yes, Red Dead Redemption, Starfield when it comes out, maybe you do a bit of Skyrim because it is my favorite game of all time. And other things in that sort of general realm of like third person MMO, not MMORPGs, RPGs, open world games, you know what I mean. That general sort of vicinity of things is probably what I'll be uploading. Not sure when the first one will come out, hopefully soon. I'm planning on getting a new PC soon. Mine is fine, but it does struggle to record when I'm playing games on my PC. So hopefully once I have that, then I'll start doing more stuff and hopefully you enjoy it. Chill. Bukers. I definitely butchered that. I'm so sorry. Why did you go to Germany for school if you can just go to school in Australia? Well, I wanted to make it more difficult for myself, so I swam on over there without my parents. I lived in a homeless shelter for six years and I took a very difficult course. No, of course I didn't choose to go to Germany. Trust me, I would not have chosen that in a million years. It was because of my dad's job. He got sent on an international project that sent him to Germany and I came with, obviously. So I did high school in Germany or middle school and high school there from seventh grade to 12th grade. And while I hated it for the first two years and I was severely depressed and wanted to kill my parents, I ended up really liking it. My best friends are from there. I ended up getting a very good education, even if I didn't care that much. And it was a very good time. And I've also opened my eyes to the international life of being able to travel and live abroad and all that, which on one hand is great, on the the other hand sucks because I'm in Australia and I can't go anywhere without paying like a stupid amount of money. So yeah. Rex Danger, baby. That is a great name, by the way. Asks, I know you mostly play GTA, but would you want to play some other games on the channel? Similar question. My suggestion is that you should try out a Resident Evil game. That would be some good content right there. Funny you should say that. One of my best friends actually suggested I should play the new Resident Evil, was it 4 Remastered that came out a few months ago when it came out? Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a pussy, so I didn't want to. Also, at that time, my channel was still in like kind of the growing phase. I think now I'd consider it if you wanted to see Let's Plays on like those types of games, let me know and I may give it a shot. Riley asks, I was just wondering how the YouTube algorithm treats new creators. I'm going to turn to my good friend, Mr. Beast here. I'm joking. He's not my good friend. He's just a good YouTuber. And what he always says is just make the best videos possible. And I know it's annoying advice, but it is true. If you are a new creator with zero subscribers, but you make the best video on the platform, it will get views. That's just how it works. Yes, maybe it will take a little bit longer for it to initially like boost up. But if the video is really, really good, it will get views. Views. Like my first video on this channel, which was my level one in 2022 video on GTA, it started off with zero views in like the first week. Then after like two or three weeks, it was at a few thousand. The first video on the channel with zero subscribers got a few thousand views just because it was good enough. So the YouTube algorithm doesn't discriminate against anyone unless you're like violating the community terms or something. So as long as you make the best video, it will do good. That's the best advice I can give you. Flippy Boyo asks, for how long have you been playing GTA Online? What are your thoughts on how the community has grown and changed if noticed at all? I've been playing GTA since day number uno, since the game came out pretty much. And in terms of the community, the community in game has stayed pretty similar. I think people kill each other, people grief. That's been the same the whole time. The biggest change I've seen is the community of creators online. In the early days, you had the Sidemen, the crew, Vanos Gaming, doing more like funny free mode things, skits, you know, races with friends, a lot of like group stuff. Nowadays, it's a lot of solo creators that focus more on like challenges or grinds or, you know, making progress in the game. Before it was more about having fun in the game, but now it's about making progress in the game, making money, making gains, achieving speed runs. So that's kind of a really big shift from like fun to run. I don't know. Fun to, I don't know what to call it. You know what I mean? That's the main difference I've seen. And I think that's just due to the fact that because we've been playing GTA for so long. There's only so much fun with new stuff you can have. It's going to turn into more of a grind. That's how games usually go after time. And that's what we're seeing more now. But you know, you can always find fun. Like I still haven't done many of the heists. I still haven't done many of the missions. And if you find fun in those little things, you can, you can still do it. 
You know, I'm great at Q&As. Oh look, it's Brendan asks, what has been your biggest life changer since being on the YouTube Creator Program? And so, so proud of you for hitting the 100K. Been watching since 800 subs, love the content and can't wait for more. Thank you very much, Brendan. The biggest life changer since being in the YouTube Partner Program or Creator Program is... As much as I don't want to say this, it is the financial side. I'm able to be, well, I left my job for YouTube, so I'm doing this full time. I'm able to be a lot less frugal with what I, you know, buy. I can have more fun. Obviously, I'm not going out and spending stupid money, but like, if I want a cool thing, I can get it. Like, if you, I don't, I can't see on my camera. Let me open up OBS so I can see my recording. If you look, uh, where is it? There? There, I have a, I have two plushies. One is Squirtle and one is Shinx. They are both Pokemon. They weren't necessarily expensive, but like before I was on YouTube, I would have questioned about whether it was, you know, smart to buy something like that. Now I can just buy things that I want. So I have those plushies. Um, that's about it really. But yeah, the financial, not freedom. I'm definitely not free by any means, but stability, that's not even the right word either. It's just nice. It's its nice to have a bit more of a breather about things. I'm going to be able to afford a bigger apartment when I finish this contract here. That's just the main thing really. AOS Ben asks, what has been the hardest challenge in your YouTube career? Congratulations <laughs> on 100K. Biggest challenge in my YouTube career. I think the biggest challenge is consistency, for me at least. Like a lot of people may struggle with getting in front of a camera and speaking. I don't really care that much about it. A lot of people might struggle with learning how to edit. Maybe I did, I don't really remember at this point. It's been 10 years. My biggest struggle is consistency. I, I suck at time management. I'm the biggest procrastinator in the world. So being consistent is so tough for me. Luckily, I'm at a point now where like since I rely Financially on this, I kind of have to be, otherwise I'll be homeless. But back in the day when I was making videos for a hundred people, I, I really struggled to do it because there was no like external motivator apart from I'm going to try and do this to make it a career. Whereas now it is a career and if I stop doing it, I'll lose it. So that's kind of the driving factor for that at the moment, which has made it easier, but it's still very difficult for me. You see so many other creators upload every day, every two days, even twice a week. I struggle with even that just because I'm very bad at staying consistent. My energy levels are often low. I'm often too lazy to get in front of the camera and just start. It is a problem I'm trying to fix, but yeah, well, uh, uh, Liam O'Leary says, this question is very vital to your career. It needs to be answered from deep in your heart, so deep that it gives you memories of when your dad left. Ronaldo or Messi? Y you see that? That's a, that's a Manchester United badge, which means the answer is... Messi. I'm joking. No, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. And yes, I'm not going to have this stupid goddamn debate. Like, I prefer Ronaldo because I'm a United fan, because I appreciate his style of play and how he is. Messi is objectively probably the better player, but you're allowed to have a fucking opinion, lads. Stop arguing. Appreciate them both. God damn it! But really, the answer is Harry Maguire, as we all know. Jared asks, what made you start YouTube and was it a difficult decision at the time? Okay, so there are two answers to this question. I don't know why I'm so hyped. So, start YouTube this channel and start YouTube originally. We'll start with original since it's further back in the timeline of Lankman Dan or Dan. When I started my first channel, I was, I want to say 11 years old, maybe 12, I think 11. And I just started it because I was watching Minecraft YouTubers at the time that I really enjoyed. And I was like, huh, I want to do that. So I did. It wasn't really a difficult decision. It was kind of embarrassing to hide it from my parents because back when you were 11, it is a bit more difficult to get in front of a camera and speak or a microphone and speak. So it was a bit more difficult back then, but you know, I just did it because I enjoyed it. It was fun. If we're talking about Lankman Dan, so this is this is going to be a little bit of a story time. So Lankman Dan is not when I started doing YouTube again. If you look at my second channel or I think they're on my third channel now. Basically, my Call of Duty commentaries. I started doing them in November of 2021. I started doing them because I felt kind of bored with life, a bit sort of like I didn't know where I wanted to go. I was doing university, but I wasn't really enjoying it. So I thought, let's go back to something I do enjoy, which is creating videos. So I started doing those commentary videos on topics such as like being a small creator, life being hard, blah, blah, blah. And I was doing those for a couple of weeks. And then a few weeks into it, this is getting a little bit more personal now, but it, it, it's involved in the story. I got broken up with, my girlfriend broke up with me all the time. In a relationship for about a year and a half, broke up with me, and it was my first real big relationship, so, or my first relationship at all, so it, it shattered me, and I basically stopped doing YouTube at that point. I was too sad to continue, and I just didn't care enough. At that point, I had like 20 subscribers, so I was like, fuck it, who cares? And then, after about four or five months of some of the worst times of my life because of that, because of my cat at the time, or my cat that 
that my parents had that I still, you know, knew about and saw and loved uh, passed away in an unfortunate accident. And a few other things here and there that I don't really remember now. I got through a very difficult time and then at the end of May, which is when my first video got uploaded, I started to think about what I wanted to do again. I basically sacked off that previous semester from January to May, didn't go to any classes, I was really down, didn't know what I wanted to do, felt like a failure. So once again, I turned to what I knew and what I thought I was good at, which was creating videos. So it wasn't a difficult decision at all. It felt natural and I'm really happy I did it because, you know, getting back into YouTube is the best decision I ever made in my life. And in terms of what made me start doing it again, like I said, I was kind of down, didn't know what I wanted to do. So I thought I'd try that again. So yeah, a little bit of a personal story time there, but that's how I got back into Lankman Dan. So in a sense, you can probably thank my ex. Weirdly, Joel Levins, for the second time in this Q&A, has asked, have you faced any legal or copyright issues as a YouTuber? And if so, how did you navigate through them? And are there any specific goals or milestones you're working towards? Well, just to quickly answer the second question, you can watch my one year anniversary video for more specific goals I'm working towards, but realistically, the next big goal is 1 million subscribers. I have, ugh, I, have I have this thing, I want the gold one. So we're gonna get to a mil. In terms of that, just, you know, making better videos, meeting more people, becoming fitter, healthier, all the very basic things of what is what I want to work towards. And in terms of facing any legal or copyright issues as a YouTuber, um, I haven't yet. And that is because for all my music and all of my sound effects, I use a company called Epidemic Sound. I have an affiliate link in the description. So if you sign up through that, I get a little bit of a payment through it. So if you are an aspiring creator and want really high quality music and sound effects and don't want to deal with like legal issues, I'd really appreciate you going and using that link. But basically, if you use that, you're not going to have any issues with copyright. It's really easy. And in terms of other issues, I haven't had anything yet. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't really used anyone else's videos or assets or anything. So we've been fine so far. Hopefully it continues that way. Well, boys, that was the final question. Thank you for all so many questions to the q and I'm, Again, I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of them. I only have so much time and ability to speak before my everything gives out. But once again, I just want to say thank you so, so much for all the support over this past year and a half. We're currently on 130 31, maybe 132,000 subscribers now. I'm just checking just so I can be accurate. And I never really thought I was ever going to get here. My life is completely different to where it was a year and a bit ago. And that's all thanks to you. So from the bottom of my heart, I know I say this in every face cam video seemingly. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed the content. Hope you enjoyed the Q&A. And I hope you enjoy what's going to keep coming to you. So without rambling on anymore like I like to do, I'll see you in the next one. Good. See ya.